Welcome to IBC 2025. This year we bring together our global media, technology and entertainment clients showcasing their groundbreaking innovations right here in Amsterdam. Well, I'm delighted to be here sharing a cup of coffee with the delightful Simon at Bridge Technologies. Thanks so much for your time. How is the show going? This is day two. Have you been busy? You know, I actually are as uh, tired as I usually are on day three, oh. on day one. Well, that's a good sign. It is a good sign. We have a record amount of meetings. We had some interesting breakthroughs. Business is booming. So I'm very, very happy with this show. Okay, when I hear industry breakthroughs, I want to hear more. You know, this industry has been kind of working towards ITification, if you like. We talked about IPification with IP-based networks for a long time, but now it's time to embrace the IT world. We are here showcasing the full capability of utilizing any kind of signal anywhere on any function over a web browser. That sentence alone blows my mind. Yes. Hi, yeah. where, why, what, when, what are customers say? Well, the cool thing about the ITification is that we're going towards a platform called Compute. Because there's been a lot of talk about, you know, we want a cloud, we want this, we want that. Forget about it. It's all about Compute. It means that you have to have some form of CPU-based system somewhere, you can put some software on it, and then you can utilize the ability on the web browser to be anywhere to actually make that a viable solution for people like camera shaders, like editors, like graphic inserts, like master control room operators, like network operating control centers. You name the, it. the list is endless. So exactly. You're talking about simplifying things. You're talking yes. about being more efficient. Absolutely, because the problem here in the broadcast industry is that some of the cost is kind of out of control. We have to be able to reduce cost. And there's two ways of doing that. That is to use simplified systems that basically depend on IT, general availability thinking, and also to be able to do, make operators better so that the operators can do more challenges in a more controlled environment. We don't have time anymore to educate all of these fantastic creative operators to all of the nooks and crannies of specialist systems. It has to be simplified. That's very important. And that's a big, big trend across the industry, isn't it? It was a really exciting time for the industry. Absolutely, because either you embrace this, chan this, this change and, and try to lead it, or you're kind of trapped by its change just happening. We believe we are capable of leading some of that change to make sure that we can actually embrace the best tools from the IT industry, but with the broadcast flair. And so, that's how you stay ahead of the curve. Yes, Dynam. So what kind of conversations are you having? What specifically are you showcasing at the stand? Well, we are showcasing a couple of technology demonstrations because we do have pre-installed software on our own kind of appliances. We do have embedded systems, which we had for kind of 21 years. And then we have software-only solutions, which can be installed on clients' computers or in the cloud-ish, if people choose to do so. And then we have, of course, very modern Docker-based container systems, which can then be orchestrated by third-party systems. So we have the kind of full range. Many of these things are not commercially available yet. But we are yet. Exactly, because we don't believe the market is kind of ready for a lot of these things because we actually want to earn money. That's why we're here, or one of the reasons we're here. And the market is not kind of ready for that kind of granularity, but we're showcasing it as technology demos just to make sure that people understand that, yes, we do have it when it will be possible to release it into the wild. And when do you think it will be possible to release it into the wild, as you put it? Well, it's a kind of interesting question. I would love to be objective about this and say 
maybe in the next kind of 12 to 18 months the marketplace will mature it's depending on the marketplace so you just see how it goes it's easy to see why this stand is so busy it's actually very true what you're saying we've been super busy because everybody needs scalable solutions a lot of talk is being done about software blah 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 but first of all software deployed on third-party platforms it needs to work it needs to work together with other systems it needs to be super stable and it needs to be profitable yeah. all of those criteria are not met yet so that's why I'm saying I'm not trying to be coy or anything I'm just saying that it takes a while before the marketplace is ready we have the technology and people are very confident because that means that they can deploy and buy stuff today and be able to upgrade and enhance in the future because we already have those solutions. And solutions is what it's all about, Simon. It really is because, you know, we're, we're really, really trying to make the creatives, the, 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 the fantastic people that actually makes media business go around better. And that means that they need better tools because the old way of doing media, well, it's an old way. Yeah. Now we need to enhance that way, learn from the old and contribute to betterment. That's very, very important. You've got to keep moving and evolving. You just can't, I mean, the, the industry's changing so much, blink for a minute, uh, you know, and, you, and you've missed out. Absolutely, and remember that most of the broadcast industry hasn't changed for 50 years. Yeah. We kind of evolved from, you know, analog signals to digital signals to HD to 4K, but it's still the same workflow. Yeah. That is not needed anymore because of with browser-based technologies, we could do totally different and better workflows. People can elect where they want their resources to be and, and this separate the signal flow from the operator flow. Your passion for all of this is infectious. Do other people say that? <laughs> well, we, we have dealt with these kind of issues for 21 years now and, yeah. and the reason why we're kind of leading on some of these technologies is that we contributed already in 1999 to the world's first IPMPLS based networking distribution of contribution. Yeah. That's a long time ago. And we founded the company in 2004 because we really, really believe that IT and IP will be successful if you have tools to make it visible. If you actually can give people the rest of heart of understanding what's going on on this kind of weird network, then people will be comfortable adopting it. Yeah. And that's already happening. Now it's all about making the operators more comfortable by giving them even better tools. Tools that are upgradable, configurable to their desire, instead of being monumental black boxes that basically have, let's say, plagued the broadcast industry for years. Let's get rid of the experts, not because they're bad, but because we need everybody to be an expert. I think that's a lovely point to end it on. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the show. Good luck with it all. Thank you.